today's lesson. Today we're going to look at uh, logarithmic graphs. Now logarithmic graphs are quite related to exponential graphs, so in order to get a complete picture I'm going to look at both. So I'm going to start off with an exponential graph and you might just be familiar with this. Let's say we wanted to graph y equals uh, 2 to the x. So a very nice little exponential function. Well, to help us get an understanding of the graph, I'm going to get um, a small table of values. Now, those of you who don't like tables of values could also put this in your graphing calculator and get a pretty good picture. Let's see what, uh, what goes on here. <clears throat> what we have, if I look at some very simple uh, values like negative 1, 0, and 1, <clears throat> 2 to the negative 1 is... 1 over 2 to the positive 1, or 1 half. 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. And 2 to the 1 is going to be 2. So that gives me enough points to get a pretty good idea of my graph. It'll look like this. A negative 1 goes up a half. A 0 goes up to 1. And 1 goes up to 2. Now, um, if I had the time, I would do quite a few more points, but um, I'll just say at the moment, trust me, here's what the graph looks like. Okay. So, a few key ingredients about this graph. Uh, the uh, domain would be all real numbers. And the range is all y values that are greater than zero. You'll notice that the um, y value never actually achieves zero. This is uh, a horizontal asymptote, and the graph just gets continuously lower as we move to the left, but it never does touch. So this is a typical exponential graph. Now I'm going to compare that to um, another graph that's very related to this, and that is a logarithmic graph base 2. So what I'm now going to do is say, well, uh, let's try and get a picture of this graph here. Um, y equals log base 2 of x. Now you probably already remember that this is the inverse function of this exponential function. Uh, to convince you of that, let me take this logarithmic statement and rewrite it as 2 to the y equals x. So that's saying the same thing as y equals log of x base 2. Uh, in this form, it's more readily understandable, but you can see what's happening between this function and this function is that the roles of the x and the y have been reversed. Instead of y equals, it's x equals. Now, if that's the case, we can get a very simple table of values and get a picture of the logarithmic graph. So our table of values will be very much related to this one here, except the roles have been reversed. I'm going to put in for y, negative 1, 0, and 1, and the corresponding x values are going to be just like up here. Uh, we would get 2 to the negative 1, so the x would be 1 half. We would get um, 2 to the 0, and that would give us 1. And then we would get 2 to the 1, or 2. And so let's get a picture here. Here's our logarithmic graph. <clears throat> the x value of 1 half corresponds to negative 1. So 1 half corresponds down to negative 1. 1, 0 and 2, 1. Now again, to get a more complete graph, I would use many more points, but you'll just have to trust me on this one. Here's what it looks like. And very interesting graph, very related to this one. In fact, they really are um, very much the same shape, but one important distinction. Um, this is the inverse graph of this, which means it's a direct reflection across the line y equals x. If you took the line y equals x and reflected this original graph across it, you get the inverse graph. 
um, a few key important uh, ingredients here, the domain and range. Domain is now behaving the way the range behaved in the exponential function. Uh, it was greater than zero, and so we have x's greater than zero. And the range behaving like the domain in the exponential, the range is all real numbers. So just an important observation there. Okay, well, there's our look at log of x base 2. Now I'm going to look at two others, and then I'll summarize it all together in one picture. Two other graphs, and uh, what I'm going to do is change the, uh, the base. So, get a little space because we're going to need it. Okay, so I'm going to look at a graph that looks like this. The first exponential is going to be one half to the x. And again, I'm going to use a table of values. Okay, and I'm going to just use negative 1, 0, and 1. And so if I put uh, 1 half to the negative 1, if you work that out, you'll get a y value of 2. If you put 0, 1 half to the 0 is 1. And you put in 1, 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. So here's our exponential graph. We have negative 1 goes up 2. We have 0 and 1. And we have 1 going up a half. Again, not very many points, but you'll have to trust me. There's our exponential graph. And you can see uh, the domain and range are the same. But what is different is it, instead of going up like this when we had 2 to the x, it's coming down and uh, moving lower and lower as we go to the right. <clears throat> so slightly a different shape. Um, now I'm going to look at its uh, related logarithmic function. The inverse would be log of x to the base 1 half. And again, if you put that in exponential, you'll see it's 1 half to the y equals x. So I can quickly put together a table of values. And for my y values, I'll use negative 1, 0, and 1. And again, this is the inverse function of this. So we already have a pretty good idea that the graph should be a reflection across the line y equals x. So if you reflected this across, what would you get? Well, that's what we're going to get down here. Um, if I plugged in a negative 1 for the y value, 1 half to the negative 1 is 2. 1 half to the 0 is 1. And uh, 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. So that's, again, a bit of a foothold. See what our picture looks like. 2 to the right corresponds to negative 1. 1 to the right corresponds to 0. And 1 half to the right corresponds to 1. So we get a graph looking like this. Same domain and range as when it was base 2 but a slightly different look to the graph. Um, once again, we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So that's another important point, just as here we had a horizontal asymptote when y equals 0. <clears throat> OK, let me just summarize this whole game in a very convenient uh, one-page look at it. Uh, because what we get out of this is, um, is something that you should have uh, committed to memory. If you have these shapes of graphs, the sort of the general families learned, and you know more or less what the graph looks like, um, you'll find it much easier to manipulate and move graphs around and deal with logarithmic uh, domains and ranges and uh, the whole gamut. In other words, here's what we have. On the one side, we have exponential functions. And on the other hand, we have logarithmic functions. Now, these are inverse functions of each other. So when we have a function that looks like this, y equals, and I'll use b to the x, okay, um, we get a graph that looks like this if b is 
greater than 1. Recall when we graphed y equals 2 to the x, that is a base that's greater than 1, and typically we will get an exponential graph that looks like this. If we now look at our logarithmic function, we have y equals log base b of x. <clears throat> and again, if you think back to the first one that I did, uh, which was base 2, here again we have a base larger than 1. What did our graph look like? Well, it kind of came up like this. Okay. And an important point was this one, 1, 0. So that's kind of the first family. That's when the bases are greater than 1. Exponential logarithmic. So to have this shape and this shape. Now, the second family is, well, what if the base isn't greater than 1? What if the base is between 0 and 1? Something like a base of 1 half. Well, the exponential graph kind of spins around and it comes down and moseys along like that. Recall um, one half to the x had that kind of shape. And the logarithmic version of that, well, you just kind of flip this over and you recall it kind of came down like this. And moseys along like that. And again, there's this important point. So, those are the basic shapes, and it's very, very helpful if you can say, well, you know, if it's a log base 10, it has this kind of a shape. You know, it'll be a little steeper, or whatever the case may be, a little bit not quite co co congruent to this one, but basically that shape. And if somebody says, oh, well, it's log base 1 fifth, then you know it's going to have that kind of a shape. Okay? So it's really important to know those graphs. Um, in order to help you with your domain and range, and also knowing about um, <clears throat> what bases are allowed and disallowed, I've created a small poem, or if you were musical, you could put it to song. Uh, and it just kind of just kind of helps you to remember what's what. And it goes like this. <clears throat> X, and this is for logarithmic functions, log functions. Here's our little song. X is positive. Okay, X is positive. Y is everything. And fun. Uh, yeah. why, why is everything and fun? And why is that? I don't really know. But uh, B is positive. But never... One. Okay, so let me just sort of say it in a more poetic way for you. X is positive, Y is everything and fun. B is positive, but never one. And if you want, you could sing that. And what that does for you is it confirms that when you have a function that looks like this, and you're wondering about restrictions on X and on B, and what Y kind of does, this little poem will summarize it for you. So it's kind of helpful. So you might want to kind of memorize that. Maybe when you're brushing your teeth, sing it and hum it to yourself. Very helpful. Okay. A couple last things that I want to do with logarithms, and that is the following. A couple of examples that show you just how uh, sometimes they can be a little slippery, and there's a few little tricks of the trade that helps us. And, um, and that's kind of where we're going to stop with the world of logarithms. It's been a pretty exciting ride. Okay, let me just show you one type of question that goes like this. Here's some given information. Log 14, we're told, equals A. Log 15, we're told, equals B. And log 16, we're told, equals C. And uh, what we want to try and do is take something like this, log of 2, and express it in terms of A, B, and C. That can be a very slippery question if you've never seen 
um, some of the tricks that we have to unraveling this mystery. So um, we want to write everything in terms of A, B, and C. And of course, that also includes numbers. Uh, numbers are also fair. And so um, what we might want to do is keep in the back of our mind that these are all common logarithms and that maybe in the common logarithm world, uh, some numbers are very helpful. For example, log of um, 10 is 1. Sometimes that's very helpful. 10 to the 1 equals 10. And we might also keep in mind um, log of 100 equals 2 because 10 squared equals 100. So I'm going to write this a little bit lower here. So there's some of our little bags of tricks, little bits and pieces here. And back to the question, how can we express log of 2 in terms of A, B, and C, and so on? Well, what you want to be thinking is, how can I rework the number 2 using 14 or 15 or 16 or maybe 10 or 100 or some kind of a base 10 number. And um, how you come up with it really is just a little bit of running through possibilities. And eventually you might think of rewriting that 2 as writing it as, um, let's see, uh, we'll take 16 of all things. Now I, I'm thinking 16 because I see a 16 over here. And you might think about this and say, well, wait a minute. If I take the fourth root of 16, i.e., I write 16 to the one-fourth, then that's the same thing as the number 2. Okay? Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 makes 16, so the fourth root of 16 is another way to write the number 2. Why is this form helpful to us? Because I can bring the exponent out front, and then have 1 quarter times log 16. Well, you can see we're basically there now. I'm going to have 1 quarter times log 16, which is C. So I would probably just write this as C over 4. Okay. Now, once you've seen some questions like this, then you kind of see, okay, I see how they're unraveling them. But they can be very slippery. Um, the next one, and I'm going to need the room, so I'm just going to put, uh, put this up here uh, in my little grab bag of stuff. I have now a new thing that I can use, and that is that log 2 is equal to c over 4. So I'm just cramming that in there. I hope it's readable, uh, because I'm going to need some room now to go on to the next one, which is log of 3. And, of course, I could go and find a whole bunch of these kinds of things, but I'm just going to do a couple of them to show you how they work. Log of 3. Again, you've got to be thinking, well, what numbers are ways of writing 3? Different ways that might involve um, 14, 15, 16, uh, maybe a 2 now that we have that, or a 10 or a 100. And with a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of experience, you might think to write, well... Isn't log of 30 divided by 10 the same thing as log 3? Well, sure it is. Now, why am I thinking of 30 and 10? Well, 10 is one of my magic numbers, one of my usable numbers, and 30 could be written as 15 and 2. So that's why I'm using those particular numbers. So I'm going to be thinking of this as 15 times 2 all over 10. Now, that's still writing 3, okay? but using the numbers in our little grab bag. And so, using the laws of logarithms, I can break this up and write this as log of 15. Because it's multiplied, it's plus log of 2. And because it's divided by 10, it's minus log 10. Well, now... It's a matter of replacing these with what I know they're equal to. Log 15 is B. Plus, log 2 is C over 4. Minus log 10. Well, log 10 is 1. There's my answer. So, a little bit slippery, um, but once you've seen how they work, um, I think you'll find they are, they're doable. They just... It can be a little 
tricky. I have one more example along the lines of this uh, that I think is good to see, and it works as follows. It's based on the um, change of base formula. <clears throat> Very useful little formula that you recall was also a way that we could um, graph on the graphing calculator functions that were not base 10. For example, if you wanted to graph something like this, uh, say log of x base 2, and just to sort of confirm that our work earlier was totally correct, you could put this on your graphing calculator by going, well, that would be log x divided by log 2. And just throw that into your graphing calculator, and guess what? You've got a good picture. Now, that's because what I've done is changed it from a base 2 to now being two logarithms that are base 10. Very doable on the graphing calculator. So how can we use the same little trick for the next example, which says simplify the following. And here's what the following looks like. Oh, frightening looking stuff. Uh, we have log of 2 base 3 times log of 3 base 4, and you guessed it, log of 4 base 5. <clears throat> How do we try to simplify this into maybe one simple looking logarithmic term? Well, I go to my change of base formula and I rewrite these. So I would write this as log 2 over log 3 using base 10 times log 3 over log 4 times log 4 over log 5. Now, remember that logarithms of numbers are simply numbers themselves. Log of 2, base 10, is just some number. So I could go ahead and start canceling, for example, log 3 is the same number as log 3 on the bottom. Log 4 is the same as log 4. <clears throat> so what do I have here? Well, I now have log 2 over log 5. All the rest of it cancelled. And if I wanted to combine this, I certainly could by using this formula, kind of working backwards. Make it one logarithm, and that would be log of 2 to base 5. And there it is. One much simpler to look at logarithm that we worked out of this mess. Well, that's where I'm going to stop today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed logarithms. Anyway, we'll catch you later. <laughs>